What's happening guys and welcome back to the channel. For today's video we're going to be checking out what I believe to be the best transforming G1 masterpiece version of Soundwave, that being this KO Fans Toys Acoustic Wave. Now I picked this up over at AliExpress, I'll be sure to include a link down in the description box below for something like $120 which I thought was an absolute steal especially considering the official version just on its own goes for $220 and this comes with his Cassecticons which are pretty sick. So let's check those out first of all. Here we have Frenzy or Rumble depending on your preference, we have Ravage and Laserbeak. So the three main ones, we might as well kickstart things off here with Frenzy. Each of them come with their own clear transparent cases, which I thought was kind of cool. You know, if you're a fan of these, you know exactly what these cases are supposed to be. Unfortunately, I'm not old enough to know what a cassette really and truly used to look like. But anyhow, let's crack it out of the shell. And here we have Frenzy in his cassette mode, which looks pretty cool. I mean, in terms of the paintwork from the front, I think that looks kind of sick. And as we come around to the back, you'll notice that he has a lot of die cast. I mean, the legs are die cast, as so is the chest. And I'm certain there is some die cast packed here into the arms. But let's get stuck into transformation as he's pretty involved. So first of all, you're just going to want to pull the sides down on both sides. We can then extend the knee joints and then rotate here at the thigh so that the hollowness is facing forwards. Now technically you can pack his cannons into these hollow spaces. I've decided not to just to prevent any type of scratching or clearance issues but it is an option you can do if you want to. We can then just do the same here for the opposite side. Rotate this around. Now you're going to want to grab the upper body and the lower legs and extend this as it will pop out the hip joints which I thought was kind of cool. We can then flip out the toes. Now technically he does have a pair of heel spurs although they are near enough impossible to actually pull out so you're definitely going to need the aid of a spudger to flip those out. I did try with a scalpel and unfortunately I was unsuccessful in doing so. So for the purposes of this review I am going to leave them in there as I don't want to scratch up that chrome or plastic but then what you're going to want to do is bring the arms down. We can then fold the forearms down, flip out the hands and do the same here for the opposite side. So again, very involved for such a small cassette. And then for some finishing touches, we just flip up the head, rotate it around and bang, there we have Frenzy fully transformed up into robot mode. And you know what guys, it's pretty impressive. A lot bigger than that very compact cassette, which was quite surprising. And detail wise not looking too bad at all now he does come with three interchangeable head sculpts so you have this one here which is slightly more neutral there's another one which to be honest looks almost identical to this one and then finally there's a smirking expression which is by far my favorite out of all three very easy to spot you simply come around to the back as you can see the neck is on a mushroom peg so you just switch them out as you so desire but yeah, really awesome. Unfortunately, mine has some very loose knee joints. I did try and tighten them up with a screwdriver, but was unsuccessful. So I may have to whack out the super glue for a slightly more permanent fix. And in terms of articulation, we do get a nice swivel out of the head. Some hinge joints here, ball joints in the shoulders, nice hinge joints there in the elbows, hip joints, thigh rotation, a knee joint apparently, I mean that's very loose, and then finally some ball joints here in the ankles. And I know you guys are going to be wondering, does he come with some of these more iconic accessories? And the answer to that is yes. So we do get a pair of these blasters, which in traditional G1 fashion can be smacked here onto the back. I will say however that they are very loosely held in. So if you do plan on displaying this guy with these in, you know, if you take him off the shelf, just be careful how you hold them as they are quite small, you know, if they detach they could potentially be lost and if you don't want them here on the back they can also peg into the hands which I thought was pretty cool but of course his most iconic accessories would be the pile driver and they are included so we get a pair of these very nice metallic red paint again for a KO there are not that many imperfections on this guy they are spring loaded so in order to activate this you simply do just apply a bit of pressure here to the end and bang they'll pop out which is cool and then in order to restore them you simply push them in and then this here will hook into place and it will latch it back but of course got to show you guys how these actually look when pegged onto the figure so you're going to want to if these don't pop off fold up the arms as you would if you were going to transform him these pieces can actually extend outwards and that will allow us to rotate these around so do the same here for this side rotate that upwards extend that outwards and then rotate that around and what's going to happen is these are just going to smack into these huge slots so just snap that in there, come to this side, let's activate it first, we crack the shell, bang, and extend that out, and then we can just scoot that in there, and there we have Frenzy or Rumble with the pile drivers attached, which looks really cool and is definitely how I'm going to be displaying this guy on the shelf, but we still have two more to take a look at, so let's very quickly go through these. Here we have Ravage in his cassette mode, not as convincing looking in my opinion as what we saw with Frenzy slash Rumble, but still, 
Not too bad. All of these, by the way, can store in the chest. Although I will say, when I pegged Laserbeak into Salmo's chest, he actually got stuck. So, as always, you know, just take caution. If you're feeling a bit of tension, a bit of pressure, I'd recommend to leave it. As if you cram this in the chest, it's near enough a nightmare to get back out. But, transformation for Ravage. First of all, I like to take the head, pull this forward. You can then come to the underside, split the legs slightly, and these top ones, as that will free up the tail. So we can just bring that there to the back. What's going to happen now is we can bring these legs forwards. And these are actually on some ball joints. So you're just going to want to basically try your best to wriggle this out. It can be a little stiff to do so. But just hinge that outwards and do the exact same here. For this side, we can then take the chromed out missiles and just fold these flush against the thighs and then flip up these pieces so much like frenzy a lot of engineering packed into these consecticons and do the exact same here for this side and then for some finishing touches quite simple we just flip this here upwards these are the little locking pieces so you want to flip those upwards and they will tab into a little slot here we can then bring that arm back down you know get him into a kind of jaguar looking pose and do the same here for this side so just flip that up bring that down and I believe that is the transformation for Ravage complete definitely the best version of a G1 Ravage I own in my collection I mean I only have the Earthrise and the Siege version so to be honest that's really not saying much but pretty cool engineering and you know what for the most part he doesn't look too bad he's a little flatter than I'd like but he does transform into a cassette so I guess I have to be a little lenient in terms of articulation he surprisingly does have some jaw articulation and a tiny bit of pivot here at the head which is cool and then you get all of the joints here out of the screws so as you would imagine they can hinge forwards and backwards as you so desire and then finally we turn to arguably the most iconic out of all of his cassette mates that being laser beak so let's just pull him out now you will notice quite a few scratches on this guy especially here from this side you can see we've got a scratch there in the middle and i think there were also some scratches here this is where he got stuck in the chest which was really unfortunate i'm not too sure if maybe i wedged it in there a bit too tight but let's get into his transformation so you're going to want to pull these wings down what we can then do is take these sections here Pull these upwards and then take these guns and hinge these round so do the same here for this side bring these around and then hinge these up and over we can now take the wings hinge these down rotate like that and basically you know just arch the wings like so do the exact same here for this side so rotate that around hinge that up take the feet bring these sections down and then for some finishing touches, this can be a little tricky to do, but you're going to want to take the head and pull it forwards. But bang, there you have Laser Beak fully transformed up into, I want to say he's bird or beast mode. And I think this is my favorite out of all three. I mean, this guy is just so iconic looking and they even packed in the tiny little camera in the top of the head, which I thought was sweet. And I love the chromed out almost missiles that we have here along the side. So very impressive Cassecticons. But of course, Soundwave is the main event of the show. So let's bring that guy out here. And here he is. And he looks sick you know for the longest time i think it was the mp13 the official takara masterpiece soundwave i always thought that was the definitive g1 soundwave for me but then i got my hands on this guy and the hyper tune aesthetic that they went with is really awesome i mean this guy looks fantastic the only thing that is kind of missing would be some cell shading and trust me that is nitpicking so let's take a look at the details i mean first of all just so cool and the blue pops i really like the shade of blue they've used for this guy the metallic red visor looks sick you can see i have slapped a nice decepticon logo onto that cassette deck now unfortunately because this is a ko there were a few scuffs straight out of the box on the chrome which is a little unfortunate now this could just be completely an isolated issue on my copy but i just thought it was just something worth mentioning but other than that really nicely done you can see we get some sick chromed out buttons here for the front torso piece and the legs look great from a frontal perspective, even as we come around to the back. You know, I think this looks a little ugly. I won't lie about that. This doesn't look the greatest, but it's because I kind of think it aids a gimmick, which I'll showcase in just a second. And when I first saw this, I thought the back looked ugly. But this is accurate to how Soundwave actually appeared in G1. He did have a bit of back kibble, so I guess I can't complain that much. But I kind of miss the detail, the kind of techie detail that we saw in the Takara MP. But overall, not looking that bad at all. You can see we have some die cast joints, which I love to see. And those are the back of the legs. So design-wise, very, very impressive. Now we're going to talk through articulation. So for a KO, you know, initially I was thinking this thing was going to be a floppy mess. And some of the joints were. So I'm just going to go over a few of the things I had to fix. The waist, first of all, was very loose. So I had to unscrew 
these two back screws and then tighten up the screw inside which kind of controls the waist joint and when I would transform this into a cassette player this piece or should I say this piece wouldn't sit flush and it's because it was actually misassembled so we'll talk about that actually during transformation but there was some slight misassembly articulation wise Soundwave does have a nice hinge joint here at the head. Unfortunately, not ball joint. I don't know what it is about these MP scale figures not having ball joints. Near enough, all the third party companies never give them to us. But regardless, we do get a nice hinge joint here out of the neck. It's very stiff, so you know, don't be scared if you try and use it and it starts distransforming all of this. We also do get a bit of articulation out of this shoulder cannon, so this joint can actually extend. So it can look up and down itself. It can also rotate left to right. Now, technically, due to transformation, you could disengage this joint and kind of get a fake butterfly joint. But officially, it is supposed to stay pegged in. We get some nice clicky ratchet joints out to the sides. Ratchet joints going the full 360 rotation there out of the bicep. Double jointed die cast elbows, which I love to see. Some all right ball joints here for the wrist. You know, truth be told, they maybe could have been a little stiffer. They can be a little loose. But individual articulated fingers, which I love. I mean, these are articulated at two points each and then the thumb is on its own separate hinge and ball joint so that's really cool we get a slight bit of ab crunch you know to be honest it's not to the greatest extent but it's definitely there and there's also some waist rotation albeit you're more than likely going to have to lift this up slightly if you really want to maximize that now in terms of the hips these are really cool too so we can hinge this section up and that out of the way to allow for them to kick forwards that far for a KO, I was very impressed with these ratchet joints. There's a lot of die cast kind of in the rear of the figure. So I was thinking maybe these would be very loose. But no, as you can see, they can definitely hold their pose. We do get just hinge joints, you know, friction joints kicking out to the sides. But I'm giving that there a good old rattle and they're not going nowhere. And then finally, we also do get a tiny ratchet joint going backwards, which is pretty decent. There is a bit of thigh rotation as well as way past 90 only on a single bend here at the knee very cool and then finally we also do get some toe pivot and that entire toe piece is die cast so again very hefty figure especially when we transform him into the cassette player he does become this very kind of chunky compact box but i like it i mean a really cool version of soundwave now we're going to talk through accessories and if you thought the accessories that came with frenzy were a lot Damn, they went above and beyond with Soundwave. So in addition to that iconic shoulder cannon, we also get the concussion blaster. And yes, these can double as batteries when we transform him up, but really like the detail and the blue on this guy just pops you can see it kind of has this metallic flake to it really nice chrome tip which looks sick some decent red detail it pegs into the hand as you would expect from traditional masterpiece so with this kind of tab and slot on the inside which is cool and we also get this energon cube now unfortunately they didn't cast it out of purple plastic it would have been so sick had they done that but you simply pop this piece off and it's supposed to house over the top of the gold chrome i don't really like doing that as i don't want to scratch the chrome but as you can see it will hold on there pretty decently so that is definitely a display option if you want and then i know you guys are going to be wondering can he push his own button to eject the cassette deck and absolutely he can so this big chromed out button if you didn't guess already is spring loaded so ravage eject you can eject the cassette deck, which is really awesome. Some pretty decent details. Now, he can technically store two of the cassettes in here. So one in the tray and then one in this back piece. And for whatever reason, if the back one gets lodged, you can take this chromed out piece and it will shoot that cassette out, which I thought was really cool. You know, nine times out of 10, Soundwave figures, you always end up having some kind of issues with the cassettes. You know, they always get wedged in there. So it's cool to see these companies kind of thinking outside of the box and giving us ways to actually get in there and pop those out, as you all know how annoying it can be. But they gave us a ton of accessories to basically transform this guy from his proper tune accurate look to how the original 80s toy looked. So you can swap it out for a yellow visor and let's just get stuck straight into that.
And here we have the Toy Acura look. Well, kind of. I basically Frankensteined him. So for the most part, one half is completely transformed to that Toy Deco, whereas the other half is kind of a mishmash. And unfortunately, it was all due to some of the pieces just being wedged in there way too tight to the extent where I had to bring in a scalpel and bits of paint started kind of chipping and I just wasn't having any of it. So I'm just going to kind of give you guys an overview of what it should look like. And I'll also be sure to smack a full body image of what the Toy Deco looks like. But just note that you could potentially damage the figure. So we do now get this really nice yellow visor and truth be told I've never been a big fan of the yellow visor but I love this new kind of crest we have that looks sick we've also swapped out the shoulder pads for slightly more techier detail and he does also come with a new cassette window although the plastic was just way too wedged in there and considering it was transparent I didn't want to snap it but this is technically supposed to replace this more smoother panel and then as we come down here to the legs this is where you're going to see some of the biggest changes so we now get red kind of I would say kneecaps and then we get get some more techie detail here for these ones some nice hydraulic details for the shins which I'll say look a lot better when in comparison to this and you can transform this guy with all of these toy accurate pieces so that was pretty awesome and we get some additional panels that peg onto the side of the legs which make him look a little cooler you know earlier as you may recall I did say I didn't think this looked the greatest and with this additional piece attached it looks cool so they kind of threw in an almost upgrade kit with this guy which was awesome but it's just unfortunate that some of the pieces are in there way tighter than perhaps I'd like but if you own the original the official version let me know down below if that was also an issue that plagued that release or if it's specifically just because this is the KO. Let's jump into a few comparisons and the most important one I think has got to be alongside the Takara Tomy Masterpiece Soundwave which I'm not going to take anything from I think this is an amazing MP probably one of my favorite of all time but you know it's safe to say it's very outdated even by today's standard masterpiece and if you're going for the most tune accurate version of Soundwave I've got to give it here to the KO Fantoys one this one looks a lot better and it's bigger and I'd say probably made out of better stuff even the KO feels significantly better made than the original Hasbro release but as we come around to the back you know what the kibble management on both of them isn't too dissimilar and like I said previously I know this is an animation accurate but I really like the kind of techie detail that we have on the back of this guy I just think that looks really sick let me know down in the comment section below out of the two which is the one you guys prefer here he is alongside one of the best G1 Masterpiece third party figures ever in my opinion, that being the Deformation Space Crimson Wing I think it was, but this is G1 Starscream, I mean this guy's just so awesome. In terms of scale I don't think they look too bad at all, Soundwave I believe was always a little bigger than Starscream so this is looking really sick. Here's the official Takara MP36 Megatron, yep looking great. And finally, the Magic Square MP Scale Light of Peace Optimus Prime, which, again, looks great alongside each other. So, let's turn to transformation. You know, whilst it may be a little more involved than the original Takara version, it's not that difficult to get the hang of. So, to kickstart things off with, you are going to want to bring in the Concussion Blaster. As you would expect, yes, this will transform into a kind of battery. So, snap this section in there. We can then take the chrome piece, slide that in, and bang, there's one battery. We can then slide off the shoulder cannon take this piece, compress it, and then take the handle and just recess that in there. And those are your batteries. Now they are supposed to store in the backpack, although personally, I found the backpack doesn't really like to close on this version. I'm not sure if I'm storing them in the wrong way, but as you guys can see, it just wants to pop open all the time. I've tried to put them, you know, the other way around, but no matter what way I store them, they just continuously want to shoot out of position so that's a little bit of a shame you can see it doesn't quite catch so for the purposes of this review i'm just going to set them off to the side but coming back to soundwave you're going to want to take this peg and just fold that in there we can then come around to the back take this panel hinge this out lift this section out and then we can take this piece and bring this here forwards until it softly clicks into place we can now take soundwave's head and just rotate that there into the hollow cavity and now technically you can take this waist joint and rotate here all the way around we can now take the thumb joints bring those inwards and what's going to happen here is we're just going to bring that down rotate the hand around like that and these are just going to snap into place straighten that out and do the exact same here for the opposite side so bring this section down rotate that around and then just compress it inside that hollow cavity now that we've done that we can split the legs come here to the underside disengage this catch come around here to the front bring this up bring these panels up and what's going to happen is we're going to take these side pieces hinge those up make sure that ab crunch is fairly strained out 
and just snap them into place. To be fair, they just rest there, but they will hold their position. Now we're gonna take this, bring this down and rotate this around. Now this is where I had some misassembly. So what I had to do when I got this guy out of the box is that these pieces, which is the front of the figure, were originally facing the back. So I had to unscrew this and basically flip this around and it just tidied up the cassette mode so much better. For those of you who come into the same issue, be sure to drop a comment down below and I'll try my best to help you guys out. But once you've rotated the main torso, we can then take the hips and also rotate this section around just like that. We can then bring this down and what's going to happen is these tiny little die cast pieces are just going to flip upwards and do the same here for this side and that should allow us to compress this so compress all that down once you've done that we can now lock this piece back into place so it will snap in and then this will just catch there onto the underside we can then come around here to the back take this and just snap that there into place. Now this too can also be a little tricky. What you're gonna to wanna to do is take these shoulder joints. Now, as I showcased previously, where we could kind of access that faux butterfly joint, you are gonna to wanna to detach these, extend these around, and this here, which as you can see, sadly, a bit of the plastic's kind of warped, that is gonna peg into this tab, and then this tab is gonna peg into that slot. So, and then at the same time, this tab's gonna peg into that slot. So there's a lot going on, but just make sure that you give this here a good squeeze. As you can see, that will snap in, and then that will snap in. Repeat the same process on the opposite side, and you should be pretty good to go. Now we can come to the leg transformation, which too can also be a little complicated, I'm not gonna lie. Just make sure that there is pretty straightened out. What you're gonna wanna do here is take this die cast piece, hinge this up, it does actually hook into place, so unhook it, and then rotate here at the thigh joint, and we can bring this section up like that. You're now going to want to take these side pieces, bring those outwards just like that, and then extend them. And inside this one is this tiny little blue panel. So flip that section out, bring that upwards. We can now take the foot, detach it just like this, and then rotate here and it will snap into place. We can now bend here, take this knee joint and bring this section out which will allow for some clearance to take this panel, bring this out and unfold this tiny little white section and then we can just snap that back into place. Now in terms of folding all of this up, that's gonna tuck in there and it should tuck in like that. And now is where things can get a little tricky. So you're gonna to wanna to bend here at the knee. As you would expect, that tab's gonna peg into that slot. So give that there a good squeeze. However, before you do that, take this section here, hinge that up and then tab that in as this is gonna latch over the top and will snap there into place. Now with this, you're gonna wanna bring it down as we're gonna take this panel, take this piece here, bring that down, detach it and then bring that in. We can then take this here and just snap that into place. So rinse and repeat the same process on the opposite side. And there is both sides transformed. Now what you're gonna wanna do is come here to the underside, take this little panel and bring this section here forwards. And now comes the challenging aspect. And this is the area where the misassembly when I first got this out of the box kind of screwed a few things up. So what you're gonna wanna do here is take these panels and just hinge these outwards. Now this is rather fiddly, I'm not gonna lie, this is probably the more fiddly aspect of the conversion. What's gonna happen is we're now gonna flip this here upwards, just like this, and already it's causing some problems, guys. And then this is gonna compress, and then these are gonna slide underneath these pieces. It can be very difficult to do, so I'd recommend snapping that in first of all, and then taking these here, snapping those into place, and then do the same here for this side. So make sure this one here also, come on, get over here, snaps into place. And bang, there you have the KO Fans Toys Acoustic Wave fully transformed up into his cassette player mode. And do you know what? It's pretty cool. The transformation, honestly, once you get the hang of things, is nowhere near as complicated as it may seem the first time round. And it results in a pretty nice looking cassette mode. I mean, yeah, granted, the back doesn't look the greatest, but considering this thing turns from such a streamlined robot into a very compact brick, I think they've done a great job. Now, sadly for me, I kind of have this strange gap on this bottom section. I'm not too sure why. 
I mean, maybe if I screw this in, it might help fix that. But looking really awesome from the front. I mean, immaculate paintwork. That all looks pretty cool. You can still activate the cassette deck. Unfortunately, none of the buttons actually push in like the official Takara. And there's no kind of audio jack here at the top. That is literally the mushroom peg that holds on to the shoulder cannon. But these pieces can hinge up and down. And this does fully rotate. So... Overall, not too bad at all for those wondering. This is what the underside of Acoustic Wave looks like. Here is the side, here is the top, here is the back, and here is the front. And here for a comparison in cassette mode, we have the Takara version on the left and the Fans Toys KO release on the right. And you know what? I'm kind of torn as to which one I prefer here in this mode, as I really like the detail and I like some of the functionality of the buttons. And you know, this actually had the audio jack. But again, if you're going for tune accuracy, the Fan Toys version think is the way to go. I mean, this is what they look like from a side by side. I much prefer the detail that we have here, but it's not technically animation accurate. And then as we come around to the back, to be fair, none of them look the best. I mean, if I was really to put some money on it, maybe this one tidies up just a little better, but you know, really and truly it's subjective. Let me know down in the comment section below, which out of the two do you prefer? But the KO Fans Toys is much thicker. It literally is like a brick in comparison to this Takara version. And both of them do have the opening cassette deck. So pretty awesome. And that was my review on what I believe to be the best transforming version of a Generation 1 Soundwave, the KO Fantoys Acoustic Wave. I mean, this guy's great. This specific version comes with three of the Cassecticons, Laserbeak, Ravage, and Frenzy. And in their own right, they're really cool. You know, I have a few QC issues just across the board for this set. You know, there are some joints which are a little too loose, some which are just too tight. But you see that with some official, or should I say, you know, kind of official original releases of third-party figures, I guess I should say. So I can't speak specifically say if that's because this is a KO of a third party figure. You guys who own the original will just have to let me know down in the comment section below. But for the most part, for the price, this guy's awesome. I mean, the plastic and the die cast feels great in the robot mode and in the cassette mode. I really like the transformation. You know, yes, it does take the hang of getting used to things, but that just goes without saying for the majority of third party figures. Once you do get the hang of it, it's pretty straightforward to go from robot into the cassette mode. And the cassette mode, I also think, looks really cool. You know, if you're after a tune accurate version of Soundwave and you're not too fussed about toy accuracy, then this is the one to go for and if you do like toy accuracy well they basically threw in an upgrade kit as you can upgrade this guy to that toy accurate look although I do think some of the pieces are held on a little too firm and then I'd like meaning that you're probably going to scratch some paint or perhaps dent some plastic depending on the quality of your spudger but I'd love to get your thoughts down in the comment section below what do you guys think of this KO Fans Toys Acoustic Wave and if you are looking to pick this up again I'll be sure to include that AliExpress link down in the description box below where I got my own I thank you all so much for watching and until my next video review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.